guys, it's Bella and welcome to another Christmas video. Today, if you can tell by the title, I'm going to be reading a Christmas creepypasta. Now, I've already read this through, obviously, because I've got to like, know what it's about. And I don't find it scary, but if you're easily scared, maybe don't listen to it. Like, I don't know, like, it's weird with me because I f sometimes feel not immune to scary things, but like, I can take a lot more. So I don't know whether this story that I'm about to share now, you would find creepy, but it was on Creepypasta's page. It's Christmas, so you know. And let's get in to the video. I could never sleep well in hotels. I guess that's somewhat of an understatement though. I couldn't ever sleep well in general but hotels were the worst. Just the thought that the previous occupant of this bed is a complete stranger was repulsive in my mind, but that's besides the point. What I'm getting at is how this lack of sleep in hotels changed my life. For Christmas, we were spending it in a really shitty hotel. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not like I didn't enjoy the all-you-can-eat buffet of soggy hash browns and grits of Christmas Eve dinner, but of course the first snow of the season had to cancel our flight home. It was Christmas Eve and I was trying to sleep in this bleach saturated room. My mind was wondering, wondering what happened in here to cause such an excessive amount of bleach needed. The room was nothing out of the ordinary, a couple beds and a bathroom, a microwave. The microwave was pretty disgusting though, it looked like it needed dusting. Somehow, I escaped the room and the stench of the bleach into a dreamless sleep. Waking up, I could tell it was early morning. My dad was next to me snoring and he usually wakes up before 4am. That's when it hit me. It's Christmas and I was about to let this bad fortune ruin my favourite holiday. Looking across at the bed at the clock to check the time, this is when I noticed it. The silhouette of a man, about six foot three, across the room staring at my mum's sleep. Still half asleep and caught up in the moment, I couldn't help but thinking of Santa Claus. I realised how stupid the thought was, and soon the horror filled my head. I choked back a shriek. I knew I couldn't let him see that I was awake, so I quietly put my head back down, pretending to sleep. My mind was racing. Someone was in my room, and I couldn't do anything. I was a scrawny 16-year-old. This man looked like he was built like an ox. I wondered if I could wake my dad up in time, but I knew it would Work. He slept like a rock. A bucket of water couldn't get him up fast enough. I was practically in tears and I'd never felt so helpless. For a second time, I tried back a scream. He was standing next to me and I could feel and hear his repulsive breath on my face. It smelt like he'd been eating rotten meat for a week and with no thought of brushing his teeth. If he didn't know I was awake, he surely did now. Seeing my face was contorted in fear. The breathing stopped and I couldn't help the sigh of relief. I would have kicked myself but there was no need. I heard the door open and then close again. I launched out of bed. Nothing in the room was out of order and my family was still asleep. That couldn't have been a dream. I could not have imagined that. Feeling awake as ever, a horrible idea popped into my head. And before I could push it away, I was pulling the door open. Glancing back to the door in order to memorise the room number, I saw a giant spray painted black X on the door. Had I seen this without the prior experience, I probably would have thought it was just some stupid kids. I knew better, but not enough to know what it was for. My heart skipped a beat. There he was, turning the corner at the end of the hall. Why am I doing this? I tailed him to the parking lot, but he was nowhere in sight. One moment he was walking out of the lobby, the next he's gone, realising how cold it was outside in paper thin pyjamas. I returned to the lobby. No one was around. Strange. I could swear there's usually a night guard. Adrenaline wearing off, I realised how stupid and rash my actions had been. 
He could have killed me. I cursed myself back up the stairs. I knew something was wrong when I got to my floor. The door to my room was wide open. I hadn't left it like that, right? I walked inside and after a quick search of the room, I determined its safety and my family was still asleep. I locked the door and got back into bed, though I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. I listened to my dad get up and eventually my mum followed, but I still pretended to sleep. A few hours passed and my parents got my sister and I up. We got into the car and made our way back to the airport. Digging through my bag to find my iPod lead, I found something that hadn't been there the previous day. A note that simply held the five words I still think about to this day. I knew you were awake. It's now been two months since the hotel experience. I am still scared for my life and I know it sounds stupid, but it gets worse every day. That note I found wasn't the only one. liked it i know it was a bit different like if you guys like these kind of videos like where i just kind of talk to the camera like a story thing then give this video a thumbs up or comment you guys can